today I'm going to review a Doctor Who story and it's called Robot. That, Mr. Benton, is the Doctor. He's changed, apparently. So what happened this time? Robot was the first story from season 12 and is a four-parter. It was first broadcast on the 28th of December 1974. It's famous for being the first story to star Tom Baker as the Doctor. Barry Letts noticed him um, in the film The Golden Voyager Sinbad in 1973. When he was offered the role, he was unemployed and working on a building site. Robot also introduced the character of Harry Sullivan, played by Ian Martyr. The story also features the return of Sarah Jane Smith. Also, Unit, the Brigadier and Benton return. Even Bessie's in this. This was because Barry Letts wanted familiar faces, so it was a smooth transaction for the audience, because John Pertwee had played the Doctor for five years. Barry Letts would only be the producer for the first story. After that, Philip Hinchcliffe would take over from the Ark in Space onwards and would focus more on body horror and gothic horror in the show. Robot was written by Terence Dix and he based the idea on the film King Kong. He would later go on to write the novelisation in 1975 entitled The Giant Robot. The music was by Dudley Simpson and the viewing figures were quite high, an improvement on last season with over 10 million. Doctor Who Robot stars Tom Baker as the fourth Doctor, Elizabeth Sladen as Sarah Jane Smith, Ian Martyr as Harry Sullivan, Nicholas Courtney as Brigadier Lethbridge Stewart and John Levine as Benton. So this story is influenced by King Kong. So Elizabeth Sladen's character is like fear rear and there's like a giant robot in this story that in episode 4 it grows to ginormous size. There's also this society group that are trying to start a nuclear war. So they're hoping to destroy everyone and then they can go out and create a new world. And I have a lot of good memories of this story. First memories of watching Doctor Who. I remember my mother reading the, the newspaper that they're Hey, there's going to be a new Doctor tonight. So I always remember that and watching it. And I also remember episode four thinking the effects were crap. Even when I was a kid. Hey, hell, that bloody daft robot. Look bloody soft as bloody shit. So this story must have took the audience by surprise. Straight away there's a new title sequence. The best title sequence as well. However, the regeneration's rubbish. From John Pertway to Tom Baker, it's just blending the faces together. However, the story picks up from there. You see this strange point of view shot. And it's a robot's point of view. And it's walking around killing people. Thought it was really atmospheric and really well done. Speaking of the robot, it does look like the design of it. It does look all right and the voice is good it's just the movement's not very good it's like jerky and when it's walking it looks like it's going to trip over so this story is more like a, a third doctor story really just it has the fourth doctor in this story would probably work better if it was john pertway as the doctor but uh, tom baker's doctor's more suited to not having unit in the story you can tell it's like a barry let's produce story it's like safe and cosy whereas the next uh, story the ark in space was the first one philip hinchcliffe did and it's like totally different that in space is more body horror type of story where people are changing where in this story it's your kind of old-fashioned one set on earth with you and it say the brigadier and benton even bessie's in so tom baker is is just finding his fate with this being his first story as for the physiognomy, well, nothing's perfect. Have to take the rough with the smooth. Mind you, I think the nose is a definite improvement. He's good, but he's not as good in his next story, The Ark in Spears. He, he properly gets teeth in the role in that. But there's still some good moments in this story with him. Once you get past the first uh, the first episode where he's a bit too bit too crazy. <laughs> there's an awful scene where he's chosen his costume. And although it's nice to say unit and the brigadier and all that, by this point it was getting a bit too tired. The show needed the cheer and Tom Baker was a breath of fresh air actually. The character of Harry Sullivan introduced in this story and he's sort of like a bit irrelevant. 
he's a fun character, but because they were thinking that they might be casting an old man as the doctor, that they had him. He wasn't really needed because Tom could do all his stuff himself. So they wrote him out next season. There's some good scenes with Elizabeth Sladen in this story. And there's some good scenes with her and the robot. The, the robot likes her. There's a character called Professor Kettlewell. He's like the creator of the robot. He's, he's a funny character. He's got some crazy hair. You've got to help me. The robot has come to my house. I've got him hidden, but he's very unstable. I may not be able to control him. We must keep him out of the hands of those think tank people. Ha <laughs> ha! Look at his fucking hair feel. He has better hair than you, Bones. Ah, baldy head's the best like mine. Look at Will Smith's wife. She has a baldy bloody head and Jay looks all right. <laughs> Shh, Bones, man. Bloody Will Smith might come round here and slap us both. There's some nice bits with him and his robot that he created. The robot's like wandering around where he lives. Hey, Phil, his bloody hair's like your bugger. I mean, he's got hair like mine. <laughs> One of the main villains is the character of Miss Winters. She's a right nasty bitch. And there's a lot of good scenes with her and Sarah where she's being like rude to her and everything. But although Tom's there, uh, this is his first story. There is some really good scenes with him, Ian. When uh, Sarah's in danger, he's always serious. I like that. I like the bit at the end where he's having a conversation with Sarah. And he says, I had to do it, you know. Because he's referring to killing off the robot. I had to do it, you know. Yes, yes, I know. It was insane and it did terrible things. But uh, at first... It was so human. It was a wonderful creature. You also get all the traditional things, his sonic screwdriver, jelly babies. Would you like a jelly baby? And I like the, the end scene. There's like um, a classic quote that he uses in episode four when he's talking to Sarah. Doctor, you're, you're being childish. Well, of course I am. There's no point in being grown up if you can't be childish sometimes. There's a lot of tension in episode three and four where there's like a ticking clock. They're waiting for the seconds before the, the fire the nuclear missiles. But episode four is definitely the weakest of the four episodes. It's partly to do with the effects. The effects of the robot by and large look bad. And also when the doctor invents this substance that he can shrink the robot and destroy it, that looks bad as well. And I remember even as a kid watching it thinking it looked shit. So this was kind of like the end of an era. And the start of a new one. So like out of the old in with the new. And re really watching it, it's improved a little bit. I really enjoyed watching it. I thought episodes one, two and three were pretty good. It was just the last episode was a bit of a disappointment with the effects. And the robot looks good. It's just when it's moving it looks a bit silly. And Tom doesn't properly find his fate until the arc in space, the next story. And although it was nice to see you in it and the Brigadier and all them. They were getting a bit tired at this point. So it was good it changed with Tom Baker's era. So overall I thought it was good. Uh, and out of 10, I think I'd give it an 8. 8 out of 10. And you think those are good, I think. Not bad, Phil. The robot looked bloody shit, though. Okay, everybody, bye. See you next time. Like, subscribe and share. Bye. Bye. Doctor, about that dinner at the palace, Her Majesty. Yes. Well, I'll tell them you'll be a little late.